Drew went in. Welcome, everyone. Good to see everyone. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> hey. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah. Um, before we, before we get started, uh, painting or sketching, um, I thought I could just give a few reminders as I usually do, uh, before the classes. Um, so if, are you getting any static from me, Jeff? I get static from you all the time, but not, not the kind of static you're probably talking about right now. <laughs> okay. Just let me know if I, if you did. <laughs> Okay, um, so uh, how we do these classes, we just keep everyone muted just to keep it uh, nice and organized and so we can keep it at a nice pace. Um, and then, but if you do have a question, you can use the chat box, uh, the chat feature in Zoom, and I'll be monitoring that uh, throughout to answer any questions or um, if it's a question that I need to ask Jeff, then I'll wait for a time when I can Yes, Jeff. Um, other than that, that is that is it. Hope everyone uh, has fun with the painting the cow tonight. It's a new one. Cool. Thank you, Jake. So, uh, just so you know, this this cow here is probably about um, three or four sittings. So, three or four times sitting down after thing everything sets up and reworking um, colors. But uh, we're gonna do a smaller one, um, but we're still gonna be pushing to get through this one. And we're not even gonna get, uh, normally, you know, we do the, um, just do quick sketches at first, but I think tonight we're just gonna go right ahead and get started with the drawing and so we can get into the painting right away also. Uh, if you have a square canvas, um, wonderful. What I did is I drew uh, two lines, um, putting it into four different squadrons here, or, uh, four different parts. And this is going to help us make our cast, uh, the drawing more accurate. If, um, if you are using a rectangle, then what I would do is probably um, do the same thing, uh, split it down into four sections, except you're gonna have, instead of four squares, four ring, uh, rectangles. So you might want to, um, well, when we get drawing, um, remind me, and I'll make sure that we keep that measurement down just a little bit uh, for the rectangle. Um, canvases. So if we if we look at our cow, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there is about the center. His the middle of his nose is going to be about the center of our um, painting, and then this way it's going to be right about there. So his eyes will be right above our center line. So those are some things that we're gonna be um, looking for. We're also um, gonna be looking, we really want to observe. And I think Jake was able to send out the image of the calf to everybody. And if you uh, don't have it, um, you can probably send it out to you now. But the things that we're gonna look for are the shapes and curves. And to give you an example, um, here's a, you know, it's like a rounded area up here, almost like an upside down dish, but then it stays, it keeps going and that curve um, straightens out. So it's nice and round, right down the center, we'll have uh, his head. So this will be an easy part to do. But then when we are drying here, notice how this just keeps going. 
So that's just a, an idea. And I'll keep pointing out things that we want to observe, what we want to look at. Um, one example of, of four sittings and is his nose here. And uh, there's multiple layers to kind of create that um, ombre look of the, the calf's nose. So it, it, it actually took a, a few sittings to do that. And I used both brush and palette knife to get it. So um, tonight we're gonna be kind of rushing through this. I'm gonna go slow, as slow as I can, but uh, the process, um, we might not get done tonight. <laughs> but however, uh, I will make sure that you um, leave with all the instructions to finish it off. All right, let's, uh, let's start drawing. So right away, so if here's the center, we go up, here's the top. Let's uh, try to find that mark on here. And I'm gonna put it right there for the top of his head. Now, if you have a rectangle, um, you're gonna wanna come down a little bit further. If you're looking at this, it'll go up a little bit. But not much. You want most of it, the the most of his head up here on the upper part of the canvas. Uh, yeah, just a little over two inches, two and a half inches. Um, I'm actually working on a board, and I'm guessing it's maybe seventeen by seventeen. 18 by 18, maybe, Oop. right in between, 17 and three quarters. So it's a 17 and three quarter by 17 and three quarter board. So if you're working on 18 by 18, it'll probably be um, pretty close to three inches. So I'm at about two and a half inches. So if you're using a, maybe go three and a half inches, if, depending on what size um, canvas you have, obviously. But just kind of eye that up, make that observation. So there's roughly the center. Kind of make a observation of that distance on the top of your head, cow calf's head. And really it's all about observation. So um, noticing this difference, this distance on the, um, in the picture and then translating it onto your canvas. So our measurements aren't, will not be accurate. Um, there are tools uh, that you can use that, that will make it a lot easier. There's, uh, oh, I missed that question. Hang on one second. So I am, it's actually a uh, masonite board and it has three layers of gesso on it. So that way, um, uh, I'm actually gonna put this in a frame. The three layers of gesso will protect the masonite from oil paint. And so um, I'm using gesso here, but if you can use acrylic and I would do three layers just to be safe. A lot of the old time masters would not use a gesso or would not protect the canvas or the, the board. And eventually the oil paint would just eat away that, that uh, base. So that's why we wanna use a water, um, a barrier that, that'll stop oil from seeping into, into the wood. And if you have that measurement, now we're gonna do it at the bottom of his, um, maybe let's go for right here. The bottom of his nose, the top part of his lip. It's definitely more than halfway down. But if you look at this area from here to here, that's about two of those up there. So from here down to the bottom, if we go right in the center, 
That almost looks like it's exactly two of those up there. So I'm gonna take a quick little measurement right there. I'm gonna come up twice. There it is. And I do a little, a bow in the, in your um, line right there, your little measurement. That'll be the bottom of his mouth. Or the top bottom of his nose, the top part of his lip. Cool. So we've got that distance. We've got two of those distances right here. Here we can throw his bottom lip in real quick. Just make a... Take a guess, don't make it too big, but um, then we can also go, this is gonna be about one and a half of this, of this measurement up there. So I'm gonna do, got my pencil and my oil paint. All right, so we got, that measurement there, come down here, we'll go to about right about there. If that doesn't seem accurate, let me. So it's probably right about there. So if you go from your center line to your lip, it's gonna be a little bit higher than the, um, the center area there. So right now, um, we're doing the top of his head, and then we went from the bottom of his nose here, the top of his lip, this curve, from here down to the bottom. So we have one distance here, and we can double that distance to get this right here. So if we're looking at the, the center of our painting, and now we're gonna go from here to here, um, it is gonna be just a little bit more than halfway. I'm actually gonna bring that down a little bit. How's everybody doing? I, um, I hope I'm not going too fast. But we're, what we're doing is we're just making observations. And a good observation is if you look here, notice the distance from here to here to here. So we have this measurement, which would probably go to here, now we have extra. So what does that mean here? We go, actually, let's do this. Let's stick with our measurement. It's probably gonna be two of those. So one, let's be a little more, less than, So if we go, if we use this measurement there, it's gonna be one and a half. And of course over here, we'll do that same measurement. And the only reason um, if we draw a bear, there's a, there's a lot of forgiveness in the accurate, how accurate we are with them. 
but uh, like a human face, I think a cow face is very similar. If the measurements aren't accurate, um, it's gonna look a little wonky. And so just taking the time now to make sure our measurements are, are accurate, um, it, we're gonna be happier with the end product. And so again, your measurements are gonna be different. What I'm looking at is, so this measurement from here to the center of his face, is definitely shorter from here to the outside of the canvas. Matter of fact, I might even bring that in a little bit more as I look at it. So we know the, the eyes are right above here. So just draw a line right there. So that's where, where the eye is gonna start. Now for these eyes, for just for the time being, do a C, a, you know, kind of a, a kind of this shape right here, a C, with a line, with a curve in the center of it. I don't know if you can see that or not. We're gonna make it a little bit stronger. So this is what we want for that eye. Of course, it's going to be dark, except for a little glimmer of light right there. So I'm going to actually just move my camera up just so you can see that for a second. So I just want this little... And the same thing over here. Just want to make sure is it, is that making sense to everyone, or should Jeff go over that uh, once, just once more, or review? Is that making sense to everyone? Yeah. So go over. That I... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, it's going to be a flip on each side, but you want kind of a. Um, Sure, hang on one second. I got a better idea. So for the eye, we want this curve. Oh, I want that to drop down just a, I want this area dropping down just a little bit. So there's his eye. Actually, do you know what? I'm gonna, let me make a more accurate, accurate adjustment here. There we go. So once we start painting it, obviously there'll be some things that we'll make some adjustments on.
You got big, big, beautiful eyelashes there. <laughs> and this, let's fix this a little bit. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Maybe bring that curve out a little bit right there. There we go. There's the eyelashes off there, not up here. So just think, look at all the curves that are happening in here. And just like I had to make a few adjustments, it, um, do the same thing. How's everybody doing? Is that making sense? So you're looking at this, you're looking at a, a ball sitting in um, two flaps of skin that are holding it inside, obviously. And it's the two eyelashes there. And so um, think about that ball being here and how those eyelashes are gonna come over and um, over and under to hold it in place. So the more you observe, the more you start realizing little adjustments that you need to make. So that top little layer is is heavy too. Now, we complicated that. So let's just get back to the idea that it's this. That's it right there. So then we can add in all the extra details. And of course, on the other side of the face, it'll be um, turned around. 
I'm just going to do uh <laughs> he's going to look a little funny. Now he's a horse. <laughs> That's right, a smiling cow. <laughs> That's so awesome. um, try not to worry too much. Just just kind of throw those lines in there. Um, and I know that's easier said than done, but sometimes we'll kind of, uh, we just want the basic shape right now. That's all we really need is this, this shape here and that the outside part of that eyeball. Because with our paint, we're going to be able to do all the details. All right, so from, I'm actually going to make his lip right here smaller. And, and again, right now we're just making observations and, and I hope you're, you're able to um, see that. Let me come back again. See the cow that we, um, Jake sent out to everybody. So, we do a little cup right here, a bowl. We're just simplifying this right here. Just do a little bowl. And of course, um, has a top on it. To me, now he's grumpy. Oh, nice, Debbie. <laughs> We can take our, so let me do this again. So we have our, our bowl with the top, but come down. So this is going to be more like this. Get rid of this. We got the bottom of his mouth here. So that's a little out of proportion, but at least you can kind of see what we're looking for. He looks like a mad uh, sea turtle coming at you. He's <laughs> So here's the, the dish as it comes down, kind of do a hook this way and hook that way. There's the nostril in there. And then just uh, this will be a light pink area in the, in the cow there. And it comes down. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> so I actually probably want him more like this for accuracy. Just curious, uh, does everyone want it um, zoomed out a little further like this so we can see the reference or do you want it a little bit closer so you can just see the sketch? Is it, do you have a preference or? See if I can come in just a little bit closer. Yeah, that might be better. Oh yeah, closer. All right. How is that for everyone? Is that easy enough to see or should we go closer? Seems like that might be good. Yeah, just let us know at any time if it uh, could be changed to, to be better. I'll bring it closer while I draw the nose. How does that sound? I'm actually going to bring that. All right, so with my drawing, I either have to make his nose bigger, which I think I'm gonna do, which brings it back to my original measurements. So what I was doing is making an observation of the size of my uh, nose and mouth here to where the eyes are. So there we go. Because remember that curve. Is right there. So I'm going to. Probably make that a little bit bigger. You're looking for, um, you're observing the proportions, making sure that they feel right. So what I'm doing is I'm actually looking for the little nuances on the side of his face right here, the, the shapes of it. So coming from the top of his head, it kind of, it's rounded here, but then it, uh, 
there's a little dip in here, right as above on the skull, above the eye. There we go. As it comes down, um, just about at the top of his nose, it starts curving like this. And there we got the measurement rate. So you want that, his, not, his uh, snout just to go past that a hair. There, now it's starting to feel right. So now I'm gonna make a, go back to my original measurement. Should have trusted it in the first place. There we go. I'm gonna make some really definite features on his face. Um, that will just kind of be um, barely seen once we are uh, painting him. But they're definite features, just like this, it'll come down. My eyes might have to come in just a hair. Just making some, making little adjustments. And again, now is the time to do the, to uh, make adjustments so that he's gonna feel right. As I'm looking at his head, I'm gonna come out a little bit more like this. So again, I just keep standing back, 
making sure that those proportions feel right. Um, that's, that's what I'm looking for. That's better. And so the bottom of his ear comes out, it's, it's, it's almost straight out from right there, the top of his eye. So I'm gonna come down. Go up, and of course, I'm the, I'm, I want to come down here, but where that curve is, and now go over. There we go. We'll give him some big ears. In the picture, he's got really big ears. So you can kind of see why I mentioned that it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for us to, to get through it. But that's okay. This is all part of the process. What we're doing right now is such an important part of learning to be an artist because it's a lot of, sometimes we would like to think that it's just all about um, walking up to the canvas and applying paint and it turns out fantastic. Sometimes we have to work for it a little bit. And especially with a, a calf face, uh, making sure that it's, it's somewhat accurate. Um, the, the work that we're doing now is gonna pay off once we start painting. What those two lines are is kind of where the break is, where this is the, the very front part of his face, and about right there is where it starts heading back. And I'm going to bring his eye over just a hair.
All right, so how's everybody doing? I'll just, I'll just take a break for a moment. Um, and again, right now we're just getting things in place. <laughs> Ada, that looks pretty dangerous. Um, we're just getting things in place. And again, once if everything's accurate right now, oh, beautiful, Barb. Perfect. Um, we're going to be so happy with it once we start. Excellent, Debbie. We're going to be so happy with it because now it'll be basically a paint by number. So let's do that same thing over here. Hey, Jeff, I'm going to uh, step away for a sec here. Sounds good. All right, so I'm going to actually fix his head again. Go back to my original measurement. I should just learn to trust that. All right, he's looking, he's looking good. Let's try to straighten this up a little bit. Not that much of a bow on it. Yeah.
All right, I'm just gonna take a break for a moment. Just let everybody get caught up. Make a couple little quick adjustments on my, on my face here. There we go. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll keep a, I won't do anything just for a few minutes, just let everybody get caught up.
All right, how's everybody doing? And of course, you know, the more you tweak it, the, the more accurate you're gonna get. Um, but a lot of that accuracy, you, you have no choice but to do it with the paint. Like the little eyelids here and the eyelashes, um, it will take maybe a two or three things just to build up the layers and to get those, those uh, colors right, get the layers right. All right, is everybody ready to start painting? So uh, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. All right, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs ups. Excellent. Perfect. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make a quick adjustment. Actually before, notice in here, the variety of, of the white um, color in here. So we have dirty white colors and we have some nice um, clean white that's just slightly tinted with a light yellow, just slightly tinted. We have some dark, dark areas right back here. It's definitely his eyes inside his nostrils here. So we definitely have some dark areas. We're gonna to wanna to push the boundaries where we feel comfortable with as far as the dark and the light. And sometimes, you know, usually if you're doing this and you can do um, three sittings, the first sitting, you will only do this dark muddy color in there. And um, when you come back after that muddy color is dried, you come over it with a lighter, cleaner color and you let a, just a little bit of that dark area to poke through. And now you can start um, shaping the face of the cow or whatever subject you're gonna paint. So it's, um, we're gonna try to get some uh, modeling in today. So kind of uh, taking some, um, well, we'll just work the colors back and forth, but uh, we'll, we'll just see what we can do. All right. So I'm gonna take my painting down and I'm gonna put up my palette so you can see the colors that I'm mixing. You have to excuse the noise here for a moment. So if you want to start squirting out your colors, um, I'm just going to use the basic palette. So the, I'm gonna use the primary colors. I'm gonna use cadmium yellow light. The true cad, uh, primary color is, is a lemon yellow, but uh, it just doesn't have a lot of pigment for um, tinting. And so you, you're always fighting um, your color because it, you're, you're trying to, you have to use so much lemon yellow to get to the color you want. So I use cadmium yellow light and uh, it's just a slight, a shade off from um, lemon yellow. Here is magenta.
Got my white. And here is cyan blue. So these are the three primaries. I have cyan blue, magenta, cadmium yellow light, but I'm gonna add two colors um, that are my favorite. Here's cadmium red light. That'll make it easier for us to mix his um, dark brown fur. And then I'm gonna use Indian yellow. And I like Indian yellow just because it warms all the colors up. So there we go. I'm gonna wear, I'm working with oils, I'm gonna wear gloves. If, this, if uh, you're just starting to paint, don't worry about not having gloves tonight. But if you're gonna to continue to use, well, really any paint, um, the pigment is what's, the, what's dangerous, but not necessarily the medium that it's used to, to make, whether it's oil or acrylic, so it's the pigment. So wear gloves, it just uh, kind of protects your health a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna use a lot of paper towels and I'm actually gonna do a little bit of brush work tonight also. And if you've taken the classes before, I'm gonna make my mud. I just grabbing a little bit of all my colors. And I want a neutral color. All right, so the amount that I grabbed is coming out very, um, red brick color. So I'm going to grab just a little bit more blue. It's definitely turning into a dark gray brown. Let's actually go all in with the blue. And the reason I'm doing this is because um, I want a color that's gonna harmonize the whole painting. So I'm gonna keep grabbing from this mud and mix it in with just about every color that I, I use. I will use some pure colors um, to really uh, set off the mud colors, but I'm gonna keep pulling from this, from my mud. All right, so I'm gonna grab a paintbrush. And it really doesn't matter what paintbrush you use. I'm just gonna use about a half inch wide. It's a, let me see, a number four square. And this color right here is actually a really nice color. Um, I'm gonna use that in my dark, in the dark part of his ear. And of course, as it goes out, I'll lighten it up a little bit. There we go. So again, it, it isn't gonna um, matter a whole lot what size brush you're using. Um, you just wanna be able to manage the, the paint right now. If you're using um, acrylics, uh, have a little uh, jar of water nearby, just so you can dip it in there and kind of water down the acrylic a little bit. So I'm gonna take that same color, come over here. Notice that I'm not going all the way out um, to the edge of the drawing. 
I'm staying in because I know this edge is actually going to have a really light orange tone to it. So inside the ear, inside that 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 cup where the, you know the skull is right here, here's the ear canal right in there. That's going to be nice and dark. Not a lot of sunshine is getting in there. So um, and just coming out and. Uh, I have it real thick, or not thick, but dark inside. And then I just thin it out as I go out along the ear. Actually, let's let's look around here and see what areas we can fill in with that dark. So there's a little strip right along the side of his face right here. Of, um, dark hide. And it's it's definitely going to be in the, the shadows. It's also kind of crinkled up. So I'm going to try to. Um, create some lines over here, suggesting that um, his fur is, is crinkled up a little bit right there. Hey, Jake, you know what I could do? Um, is spin it, if we don't get this painting done tonight, yeah. Um, I will videotape the rest of it. Oh. So you people can go on YouTube and just see see how to finish up the the painting. Yeah, we could we could even we could either do a part two video or we could just uh, add it on to the end of this video and when we oh there upload you go. It. Yeah. So that's that's one thing I forgot to mention is this uh, class will also the recording of this class will be on uh, YouTube a little later this week. So We can do since there's some darkness in that nose. I'm just going to clean my brush off right on his nose. There we go. So um, I'm going to. I'm not going to change out my brushes. When I get to the detail work, I'll use some finer brushes. But I'm going to keep using that same brush, and all I'll do is just wipe it off. And the reason why, again, it's it's all about color harmony in a painting. And that paint that's left in the brush is going to mix with the new color and make a connection. So it, it's going to um, create a color harmony in the painting. Can I please slow down a bit? You bet. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just do some feature work so that that'll be slow. Um, people can get caught up. So I'm going to take some blue and darken up my mud a little bit more. And I am looking for a dark, almost black color. And that'll work perfect for my eyeball.
take what's left over and I'll put it in the darkest part of the deer. You know, I want to push myself out of the, my safety zone of, of uh, um, you know, medium, col medium toned colors. So how did I get the black? If you have black, go ahead and use black. But uh, um, if you take a dark, warm color and a dark, cool color, you should get uh, a nice dark gray, which is going to be more of a nature's black. So I'll give you a little example. I'm gonna use, take some blue, which is a cool color. And I don't have to necessarily mix my dark brown right here. I can take my cadmium red light and mix that together. And I get a nice black. And it's better than a black that comes out of a tube, say a, an ivory black. Every black is kind of dead. There's not really um, a definite color to it, but um, two things. Here we get it more natural colored black. We also get to stick with that idea of color harmony because now I just use two colors that I'm already using in my mud. So I'm just gonna keep recycling my colors um, and that's gonna allow uh, that color harmony. All right, I'm gonna, again, I'm just gonna do um, details. So it'll allow me to allow people to catch up. Actually, I'm going to have a sip of my bubbly water. <laughs> and again, right now, I'm making, I'm, I'm looking for, or I'm observing the drawing and the colors. Um, the colors obviously can be adjusted. And as we go through the painting, I'm going to be adjusting colors and maybe even adjusting the shape of the face and the body a little bit. And the paint's gonna now allow me to, to, to make some corrections with it. You know where else I can clean out my brush? Right on this line. And I'm gonna show you a little trick here in a second in doing this.
I'm just, I'm, so what I'm doing basically is just clean off my brush. But I actually have a purpose in what I'm doing because again, remember we want color harmony. I'm just going around and wasting time. <laughs> but uh, um, just kind of pushing the colors. How's everybody doing? And it, it, right now, um, don't think about it, any details, uh, any tiny details. All of that will, it will come later. We just want to get the basic shapes and shading in right now. Oh, no. Yeah, sometimes that, that uh, oil paint can be a little powerful. So I, I just, I'm just gonna do a little demonstration. I mentioned that I cleaned off my brush. Well, now I can come back just kind of work that in. And again, my, my, I'm using a, a off-white, which is pretty muddy right now, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm just taking the white and working it in there and letting the colors blend to the edges and end up with a very natural looking um, line in here. It'll definitely be blurred. So now when I come back after that dries and come back, put a layer on there, let that, that darkness come through a little bit, but uh, it's gonna give it a, a layer and give it some depth and make it, just give it a little more realism. So the idea is I'm, I'm already starting to shade.
So I'm going to take a break for a second and just answer any questions if anybody has any. So one of the cool things about where I, when I cleaned off my brush along the lines, then I come in with a, a white color, I start blending it in. Now I can, just like, like how I did the ears here, I started real dark in the center. And as I went out, I kept thinning out the paint and it kept getting lighter. So that's what I'm doing here is it's, it's dark on the very edge. And then as it comes in, it starts getting lighter. Out here, I'm actually gonna start really light and work my way back towards that dark. It's just going to give this nice um, shading effect. Create some depth in the in the painting. And, and, and just move your brush around. Kind of see if you can make some as you're pushing the oil around. See how it allows you to um, draw with it kind of, you almost, you're almost modeling the paint um, to create shapes on the, in the calf. How's everybody doing? I want to make sure I'm going at the right pace for everyone. As you're kind of playing around with the paint, are you um, seeing how you can get the paint to work for you? So I'll give you another example. I'm going to grab some white here. And um, so I, I have a, a, a medium gray in there now. So I'm just gonna... Let's go a little bit lighter. So there's just, I allowed a little bit of that gray to come through. I added a, 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 a brighter white. Um, again, I'm not using a white white. I'm not letting it remain a pure white. I keep tinting it with my brush, making sure that my brush color works in there. It's the color that's already in my cow. So now I'm creating um, that color harmony. And let's try this.
And I'm gonna keep pushing that white color. Um, I'm not gonna have it as white as the, the front of his face, um, but I'm gonna keep uh, it a cool white. But I'm gonna keep pushing that, but I, I won't be able to make any comparisons until I get that yellow on here, or the yellow, the off white with a hint of yellow in it. So a nice warm, bright white on here. Then I can start making some judgment calls on if this is, if this muddy color here is working or not. Maybe I can do that just to give you a, an example. So what I did is um, it's still not as clean and bright as the second coating is gonna make it, but at least it's, it's warm and it's light. And now I have something to compare my dirty gray over here, my dirty gray white over here. So this is, is still coming out and standing out, the, the bright white here but this is connecting with it. Um, and it's just making it just a nice natural uh, bend in the face right there. Now, as we get up towards the eye, we are gonna get into a pink, thanks, cadmium, cadmium uh, red light is very strong. Let me get rid of some of it right here. All right, 
Now let's just grab a little bit of there, a little bit of that pink. There we go. Now we've got something easier to work with. Okay, so good question. Thank you, Whitney. Now, um, what I did originally is, remember I had some paint, extra paint on my brush. I just smeared that in on the top of his nose here, um, just to kind of clean off the brush, but also it allowed me to recycle that color again into his nose. So now I come back with a nice um, light pinky peach color. And I just work it in. And I'm gonna, what I'll do as I'm, um, as I'm uh, working on him, I'll just start adding layers, kind of start fine tuning that. So the mud dirtied up my pink. And now I'm coming back and kind of cleaning it up a little bit, but all of that little nuance, the little nuances of color change in there between that, that nice clean um, off white uh, peach pink color. Um, and then the muddy, uh, I'm gonna call it our atmosphere color, just so it's easier for me to, um, so it's our atmosphere color is the color that we want it to connect throughout the, the whole, the whole painting. So if we were doing, um, if you can imagine if this cow was standing out in a field and it was the early morning, the sun's coming up and it is a bright red sun affecting everything that the, that the sunlight is touching, um, that red would affect every color on the cow, right? Well, what about during the day when the sun's up, how do we get that atmosphere color Again, well, we mix a mud. So we're, we use all the colors, just like all the colors that are in the um, spectrum, mix them together. And now we're using that as our color harmony throughout the painting. So that's what I did. I was just, I'm mixing um, an off-white clean pink and with my, my mud in the nose. I'm just kind of trying to mold it a little bit. So I'm gonna get as much done as I can on the nose tonight, but tomorrow after it dries, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna make a lighter pink and take my palette knife and just 
ever so lightly put a little coating over it and just let a little bit of this color poke through. And then that, that bright color come over the top. Maybe I can, let me see if I can get it to work right now, just to give you a little example. Um, And again, I'm just trying to get that uh, uh, that ombre look where colors kind of just go in and out between the two shades. So you can get it a little bit. Uh, tomorrow, um, after it sets up and dries, um, you can really push that color because you're not mixing any colors together. You're putting a fresh color on top. Just little adjustments. Um, I'm, I'm getting out of my comfort zone and I'm, I'm really pushing myself to uh, go to light to lighter lights and darker darks. Especially if I'm going to sit down and do this sit, painting in three sittings, I'm, I don't have to worry about that as much because in my second or third or fourth sitting, um, I can. I can push a, a, a color one way or the other then also after the, the color is dry underneath. Now I have something to compare it to. And it's a lot easier for me to say, oh, I need to make this color darker. So I'm gonna take this color, mix a little bit more of my dark mud in there and that's gonna work out perfect. If you can, if you're able to see that nose, you can kind of see how that gets modeled. And you can notice that there's a little bit of the clean pink in there and then the off white there just to create a little uh, glare from the sun. But then there's just modeling between clean and, and muddy tones right in there. And really, the best way to approach this is not try not to care too much and just try some experimenting. Again, remember that, that after everything, if you're using oils, if you're using acrylics, you can work fast right now and you can be, uh, you know, adding as many colors as you want. You can finish your painting tonight if you'd like. Um, but if you're using oils, now remember, Try some experiments because if, if you sit down to do this again, um, you can make some adjustments then.
So is it a challenge? Are you find that, finding this a challenge? Good. Um, if, I, if I can call the challenge a little frustration, um, compared to a frustration, um, good, because we're learning. And um, what we're learning is, is what, as we keep painting, we'll start um, removing the things that frustrate us and um, doing little tricks that are gonna get us to what we want quicker. So right now, the, all of the, the kind of feeling our way through the painting, um, it gets easier and you will get better. The frustration goes away. And uh, um, I, I'm such a good example of that. I, I just never thought I was an artist. And the more I practice, the more I'm, I'm, the frustration is going away. So I'm telling you with confidence that if you keep painting, you are gonna create some amazing pieces. And you're gonna be very happy with them. But uh, frustration is our best friend because it tells us, it keeps reminding us what not to do next time. So again, just so um, to kind of break it down so we're, we're comprehending this in a very simple way. Our first setting should be where we just paint in um, his face with a, just a light gray toned color. Kind of pushing the, the colors a little bit, but uh, not worrying too much. The second day or the second time we um, get to it, now we're gonna start fine tuning some things, kind of pushing our lights and darks a little bit more. Um, start adding the, a little bit of detail, but not the fine detail. Um, that third or fourth time, we might push the colors back and forth, the shapes a little bit back and forth. Um, but now we're gonna start doing that fine detail, maybe the little um, eyelashes on his, coming off his eyes. So this is normally um, a process. There's some painters that will do um, a dozen, they'll do up to 20 layers. And, and that's where they're really getting into the fine detail, the very realistic paintings. So what we're doing right now is just kind of a, a crash course in understanding and um, uh, understanding how painting, uh, painting works. Because you can see, even when we, we were drawing it out, boy, there's a, a lot of uh, time that takes just in getting our measurements, our proportions accurate. And then we start painting, and now um, we have to build up the layers and make some judgment calls on how we're using the layers and the colors. And so um, it's just a, a process that you walk through. And, and again, um, we're kind of pushing the pushing ourselves to get through this, but it can be very easy and it can be very enjoyable. So, um, you know, I, I, <laughs> I apologize for the frustration, but I'm very glad because again, you've heard me say this before, frustration is our best friend. 
And that's where a lot of people stop painting too, because there's nobody that's telling them uh, you're going to get frustrated and you just have to work through that frustration. And instead they, they get frustrated and they say, I don't know how to do this. So I'm going to stop. So keep working through the frustration. Some incredible things are waiting for you on the other side of the frustration. And um, there are a lot of people that have a natural talent in painting, drawing, um, and they can probably right from birth, they're already geared to, to make sense of all this and, and, and create great art. Um, and, and you've heard people, artists say, no, you gotta put in the hard work, you gotta put in the work to, to build up your skill and, and I truly believe that. So it's just, it's kind of finding out what your skill is going to be. So we're all gonna paint differently. So it's, it's kind of the, the fun part of the process of just learning how do we paint? How am I gonna paint? Um, every one of our calves is gonna look different. We're all gonna use slightly different colors. We're gonna, we're gonna draw it out in slightly different proportions. Um, all of those things, we're gonna apply paint differently. All of these things is what is building our skill as an artist. So there's the frame I'm going to put on them. And I, I, I purposely uh, enlarged his head a little bit so that his ears would go off the, um, off the, the canvas, um, just so I can create these interesting shapes um, around him. And that, that's what helps make a painting um, dynamic, makes it interesting, uh, makes it a, an interesting composition, is, is trying to create these unique shapes to, uh, to um, complement the shape of our cow. So I took my mud color, and again, I remember uh, I already had it tinted towards a brown. Um, so now I just added a little Indian yellow and cadmium red light, lightened it up a little bit. I didn't add any white yet, and now I can come in here and.
start creating those shadings of red, that redhead, his red hide. It's an adorable redhead. So I haven't, um, in my fur, I haven't added any uh, white yet to, add, to create light. Um, I'm adding lighter shades, and this is, this is gonna naturally lighten up my mud. So now I'm getting, going to the next lighter color here. And I'm just, if I was to put a white in at this point, it would look unnatural. I'm just slowly walking through the process and pushing my colors to my the the desired effect.
<laughs> I can sing, Lena. So just slowly build the shapes, build the colors up. Um, you know, it's kind of like taking baby steps. So you're, you're able to kind of judge um, with each brush stroke, each changing of color. And, and again, this is, this is a complicated uh, subject. Uh, if we don't get the, the proportions right, if we don't get the, the face right, it, he will look a little odd. And so it's just taking the time to create a masterpiece. But we're doing fine on time. Um, we, we plan on doing it until nine about. And so we still have, look at what we've been able to accomplish in, in just a couple hours. And again, um, in a little bit, in little ways, I've, I've left the original drawing and I'm just taking advantage of ways that I can recycle my colors. And I want to show you something. Um, so 
I'm not concerned, or I'm not worrying about any perfection right now. Right now, in my mind, I'm actually just thinking light, dark, warm, cool, uh, uh, different, different contrasts. And so just to give you an example of this, if you look close up on his head, I wanted a little bit of that dark to come through, but whatever I did up here with letting the color that was in my brush come out, um, once I go over that with a cleaner color, it's only gonna add interest to the painting. So I'm, I'm completely fine leaving that there for right now. When it dries, I come back, I go over it with a nice, um, unified color to show that sunlight is is hitting the whole area but um, in the viewer's mind it's just going to be the darkness that's down by the skull the areas that the at the bottom of the hair uh, where the sunlight is not hitting so it's just it's just going to create uh, more interest and so I'm not afraid of it I'm actually embracing it and wanting it to happen because I know later it's going to be in my favor if that makes sense. Hopefully that made sense. Hey Jeff, do you wanna uh, set the camera just a little more to the right? Is this? Yeah, a little more. How's that? I think, I think a, a little more just so it's kind of at an angle just so that uh, cause sometimes it just, uh, when you go up to paint, we just get the, uh, good view of your shoulder. Head. My big fat, you just go ahead and say it, Jake. <laughs> Don't worry about my feelings. Well, I can just, I can tell you how many pieces of limp on the, are on the back of your shoulder now. <laughs> no, that's, that's perfect right there. Well, no, thank you. Yeah. So um, again, I'm only thinking about light and dark. So this, it doesn't matter what color this is. It's just light to me. What's next to it, it doesn't matter what color it is. It's dark to me. Um, again, that, that third and fourth sitting, maybe even in the second sitting, I'm going to start fine tuning, making, uh, right now all of these colors are, are connecting because uh, they all have that basic uh, atmosphere color in it. I think a lot of artists call it local color, but for me to understand its purpose, um, it's the color that the atmosphere is making it. So if it was a bright sunshiny day or a bright sunrise, the atmosphere was would be have a red overtone to everything or a red tone to everything. So that's how, um, in my mind, I think about color and how I'm gonna use color. Hi, Jalila. I think Jalila wants to show her painting. Oh, okay. All right, let's see. He is awesome. That is Look cool. At that. Jalila, you have an incredible imagination. And that's what makes a great artist. Nice Your job. style. A lot of style.
So I'll get the, the second part of this process out as soon as possible. And it's okay to let the painting sit because now this gives you time to really take it in, kind of have that conversation with a little bit, uh, make any adjustments, do any drastic changes. And now when you come back, you can have fresh eyes. You're gonna uh, know what it needs. Uh, you're gonna know where the little things that are irritating you about it are gonna be. So you can make adjustments on that. And um, it's just a, a little bit, uh, a little bit more of a challenge, but it really increases our skill as an artist. Uh, great question, Becky. Um, so you have a ton of options on what color you want it to be. Uh, if you, since this is kind of more of a classical realistic painting, um, what I would suggest is taking your mud color, uh, usually at the end, um, don't do it now, take all your colors and blend them together. So now you have one big pile of mud, right? Now you add white and tone it down. And as you're toning it down, you can start to realize maybe it's too green. So you, you, uh, uh, you can add a little bit of red to tone, tone down that green a little bit, kind of neutralize it. But then you want a nice light color, medium to light color. I'll give you an idea. Since this is my mud right here, I'm gonna grab, uh, I'm gonna have to grab some more white here, but. Okay, so here's my mud. It has a, a green tint to it. So let's go a little lighter. Now it kind of has a nice neutral gray to it. I can add a little bit of red. Uh, too much. Let's neutralize it again. There we go. There's something that's nice. So now, oh, let's go lighter than that. All right, so anybody who might have an idea, 
why did I do that? Maybe we can get Jake to unmute you. Why did I just take, use my mud color and um, anybody want to, who, who knows why I would do something like that? You can raise your uh, virtual hand if you want to answer. Let's see here. All right, let's see here, Robin. All right, you should be able to. So you can blend into the outside color. Yeah. That, um, so I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm blending into nicely into the the shade of the um, the outside shade of the tree. Tree. What in the world? Where's my brain at? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, uh, but there's a another tree, Jeff. And it has purpose of um, who wants to, who's taken the class or has taken a course and kind of understands why that we would do something like that. But you're exactly right. Who remembers? I even started off the class talking about it. Sorry, we didn't take the class, but I was going to say to harmonize the painting. Yes, that is it right there. Um, Bingo. I just took all the colors that are in my painting and added white to it. And now, and I can tint this any direction I want. Um, according to the colors I have. And then I add white. And now I have a nice neutral background that's in harmony with my cow. So it's a little trick of um, creating, that, again, that color harmony in a painting.
Yeah, so it's just um, the idea is uh, you want the, the viewer's eye to naturally float around the painting. And so there's just little tricks that you, you can use to um, enhance that, that, uh, that goal. So one is the color harmony. Now we have repeating colors that are everywhere on the painting. And you can see they kind of just naturally go together and it feels right. There's nothing harsh in the painting at all. And so um, it, we created a, a color harmony um, with, the, with our paints for our painting. Oh yeah, um, Ada, yes. Hang on a second, let me find you. Oh, how adorable, look at that. Ada, you hit a home run with him. Very adorable. <laughs> I think that's how that works. If you make them mostly um, red or pink, I think you make strawberry milk.
Oh, sorry. Um, we'll get this video up on YouTube. So don't worry uh, as far as trying to keep up with what I'm doing. Um, you'll be able to watch the video again. You'll be able to see the whole process and um, take the time to make to do your painting and make it a masterpiece. Take the time to do that. Just slowly walk through the process, making adjustments. Sometimes you'll have to make drastic adjustments, but you'll be happy that you did. Uh, take the time in the beginning of the painting to you know really uh, work out the details. You know how it's going to the the proportions, um, the design, the composition of everything, and um, that hard work will pay off at the end of the painting.
Okay, that's for you, Ada. I put a little chocolate milk on his lip. All right, I was gone for a second there, but did you did you see the uh, question, Jeff? Uh, Edinger asked, "How do we do the eyelashes?" Ah, uh, right, usually it's easier if you wait until it's done, and there's a couple ways you could do it. So, um, if you have a palette knife, I can do it with the palette knife.
but it's hard to get the control. So you could put them in with the palette knife. Otherwise, if you grab, you know, I'm using, a, again, a square tip paintbrush, you can just go and do a little flick. We got another question. Can you show me the close up of the bottom of the mouth? Sure. Um, let me try something first. Let me take a, take a part of the system here so it'll be easier to do. Does that work? We got a clapping, clapping emoji. So I think that was good. Oh, good. Oh, I missed that barb. Hang on one second. Oh, there you go. Oh, yes. perfect. Beautiful. That's exactly what I was hoping for us to get to tonight. Um, now, did you receive the, the picture, the actual picture of the excellent? Now you have a reference. You can just kind of play around with them, uh, make some adjustments. But Perfect. That's exactly what we were hoping for. Jocelyn, um, or Jocelyn, can we see your cow before you leave? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, awesome. He is awesome. Thank you, Jocelyn. Yeah, thank you. Very cool.
Thank you, Robin. Yeah, we'll get that up as soon as possible. Are there any other questions uh, from anybody? Yeah, let us know if you have any more questions. Also, if you're uh, following along with the video on YouTube, you can also ask, um, email us your question or comment your question and we can address those also. But, yeah. Before I forget, like usual, I um, <laughs> wanted to mention that uh, if you're able to, um, if you have an Instagram account, post your, uh, your painting on Instagram and then tag us at Buffalo Bouton. That, uh, that notifies us when, when it, anyone tags, uh, tags us either on their story or in a post. And then we get to see all of them and also share them with other people by posting them to our story also. So. That's just something we like to like to do um, if you have the capability. But so far, it's it's been cool to see all everybody's uh, like every week. It's it's cool to see the variety of styles um, that come from the the subject here that Jeff's painting. Also, one more thing I just thought of. Um, on our classes page, if you scroll down a little further uh, past the sign up, um, you will see a few affiliate links for uh, which affiliate links just means we get a small, um, very, very small commission uh, through anything purchased through that link. Um, but it's, it's, it's something that kind of supports us and and, and we appreciate it, but um, it's just oil paint on there right now. Um, all the typical oil paints that Jeff usually uh, uses and it's uh, it's Amazon affiliate link. So if you have your, I think, I don't know if they're Amazon Prime. So for like two day shipping, but they're, they're on Amazon. Um, Jerry's Artorama, uh, their store on Amazon, so. Anyways, I just wanted to mention that also. All right, good question. What's next Monday? That is a good question. Jake, we, what is next Monday? <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, we, we try to do it, if we can, we try to like to keep it like a month out at least uh, scheduled, but kind of slipped away from us this time. Um, so we'll, we'll figure that out and we'll We'll make sure everyone's aware of that. We're not sure exactly. We try to do new subjects. Um, 
even if it's maybe the same subject, just a little bit different painting so that it keeps it new and fresh for people um, instead of potentially getting uh, boring or, or seeming boring because we're doing the same thing that you did a month ago or a couple weeks ago or something. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll let everyone know uh, what we end up doing for the next couple of weeks. But it, actually, if you have any suggestions, um, feel free to message us on Instagram or put it in the chat now or, or email us or whatever it is. But we are totally up or open to suggestions. What about, a ten what about a tennis racket, Jeff? I can't do tennis rackets. You just did one tonight. <laughs> yeah, but does it look like a tennis racket? That's what I'm saying. It doesn't look like one. Yeah, it looks more like a tree. Got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, of course. That'd be cool. Yeah. <clears throat> um, maybe we could do uh, something similar like this. Yeah. And do a three-part, three-part series um, with it. Yeah. Any any other uh, any other suggestions? Anyone anyone else has? What have you been dying oh, to oh, paint? Oh, 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 somebody said something that I have on my radar. I've been saving pictures of basset hounds. Oh, I might go hand in hand. Ooh. Oh, River Rider would be cool too. Landscapes. Will we ever do landscapes? Yeah, we could do. Yeah. What what kind of if you're gonna do a landscape, Jeff, what do you think you'd do? Um or is that something that we want to try or yeah, we can do that, uh, definitely. Um, let me think. Maybe what I would do is go find a, a, a spot, especially yep. now with the, the, the thaw, with the, uh, the snow melting, the rivers, the little streams up uh, higher. Maybe I'll find a nice little stream to take a picture of and we can paint that. That'd be cool. Oh, someone said a beach. Someone said pretty mushroom. Yeah, these would all be cool. Oh yeah, I, I just saw that now that you said that, but it didn't register river otter. That would be, that, that's gotta be a personality one, a river otter. I did do a river rider, a serious one, a long time ago. He still oh, really? had that. Yeah. He had a, it might be way down the line in our Instagram. Uh, can we show ours now? Oh, yeah. Julie and Mike Miller. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Where are you? Let's see, I think. Uh, let's see oh, here. excellent. I see Tina's, I see Julian Mike's. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Super cool. So, um, uh, I love your style. So, if you want to keep pushing it, um, you know, you know. If we want to add the white face or you know some of the hairs on their on his eyes and stuff like that, um, we'll get that video out onto YouTube, so it'll be a follow up of what um, uh, of of how to take the next steps.
All right, Jeff, do you see uh, Gary and Aline's? No, hang on one second. Pretty cool. I see Kayla's. Awesome, Kayla. Oh, nice, Kayla. Awesome. Very nice. Oh, I can't find anybody else's. Oh, there's oh. Gary and Aline's. Okay, I had to flop the other way. Gary and awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Sweet. Good job. That is awesome. So, uh, again, thank you guys for joining us. Um, we want people to join each week. We will have we'll have simple ones, and simple paintings are just as important as the complicated ones. And so, Nick and Kaylin, home run. Uh oh, Nick, I see. Oh, awesome. I move, move to that painting. I don't know. I moved. There are these, there, these cows were uh, stole the car and they're driving down the road. And a uh, police officer pulls them over and he comes up and he's crying. And uh, they asked, why are you crying, officer? He says, this is a moving violation. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, do you see Aubrey and Kathy's and also Whitney's? No. That, yeah, that's, that's only two I saw. They were just holding theirs up here. Beautiful, Aubrey. Or is that Kathy? Beautiful, Aubrey. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice job. And you see Whitney's there? Uh, excellent. Again, Whitney, beautiful job. So um, again, this is a, a, a little bit of a challenge tonight, but that's what we want. We, we'll do the easy classes where you know it's the personality bears. And they teach us just as much as these complicated cows teach us. And as we keep painting, um, you know, it, the, everything kind of starts blending together and your style starts coming out of it. But this is... Um, I knew we wouldn't get it done, but uh, um, I'm glad we got as far as we did and everybody's turned out really nice. Yeah. Mine le looks like a weird hairy person. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we got to see it, Lena. It looks like the ceiling to me. No, oh, me. he turned out awesome. And Jalila, yours too. Oh. Yeah. You guys, uh, oh, that's all. Or is that Jalila's mom? Yours turned out incredible, also. Very nice. <laughs> but I, uh, <laughs> you can see, you know, um, that that work in the beginning is so important if we're going to um you know uh depending on what kind of painting we want i should put it that way but that work in the very beginning really does pay off uh, let's put a let's see how this guy looks in a frame sometimes i put the frame on because that'll tell me if i have to make things darker or lighter
So when when I I'll upload this to to YouTube and also the um, the rest of this uh, rest of the video um, that Jeff records, and then I'll send this out to everyone um, that took the class uh, tonight. So so you get you get well, notified. Thank, get that. Thank you, yeah. Jake. Not a problem. Hey guys, so fun. Thank you, Whitney. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Nick and Caitlin. Thank Thanks, you, you guys. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. We'll, we'll hope to see, we'll get everyone uh, updated on what we're doing next week. But we hope to see you next week. All right. I had to bring out the side a little bit. Oh, nice, Sharon. Thanks, Kayla. Sharon, are you working in oils or acrylics? Oils. oils. Yeah, excellent. Nice mastery of the, over that. And Kathy, beautiful. No, it's it is. Oh, it, look at what you created. I don't know how long you've been painting, but in just two and a half or three hours now, look at what you've created. So it, um, this is probably the fifth time that I've painted this guy. So I, I've already had practice. Um, you know, I've already uh, tried some experiments to make sure that it, that it works. Yeah, and that's so beside. you guys are doing it just kind of for the the first time. If you think about it, that's not very fair. But I like the fav I like the odds in my favor, so I'm not gonna complain.
Yeah, so just little baby steps going through the process. Make sure you step back, you know, um, take a, an overall view of your painting and, and make your judgments from, you know, that six to eight feet away. He's supposed to be a little baby calf, but how much hair is coming out of his ears? I'm starting to think he's maybe in his 50s.
Thank you, Randy. How did you do? Oh, yeah, yeah. Very oh, sweet. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, when you do the more layering, make sure you send us an image. Okay, I just realized just an update, Jeff. It's about 20 after right now. Oh, hello. Okay, yeah, maybe we can uh say goodbye to everybody and um, thank you again for joining us. Yeah, we hope you uh, oh, look at that, Eileen. Beautiful, oh, awesome. He's got, <laughs> he's got a cute little personality. Adorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you for joining us. Um, please keep coming back. Uh, Jake and I are having a lot of fun doing this, and we yeah. hope that you find painting to be uh, a, lifetime, a, a lifetime hobby that you enjoy. Uh, I'm, I'm brain dead. I hope you enjoy it for a lifetime. <laughs> How's that sound? That sounds perfect. <laughs> yeah, thank you everyone for joining. We really, yeah, we really you. do enjoy hey, hey, this. <laughs> All right, we'll see everyone next week. All right, bye everybody. Bye bye.